Hi everyone, this is Captain Baha. Recently, I asked my Instagram followers to post questions on my wall so that they, I can answer them for them. And uh, boy, did you guys ask a lot of questions and some of them are very interesting. So let's get to them. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. This is your Captain Baha. All right, everybody. So here, this is my question and answer session for you. And I will try to answer all your questions at the best of my knowledge. And as a surprise, throughout the video, I'm going to lay one wrong answer to you. And then you will see and you will find out what the wrong answer is. And you're going to comment down below in the comment section of the video. All right. So let's get to it. One of the questions that I was asked was, uh, if an airplane can fly, can a passenger airplane fly backwards? No, it cannot. But I have experienced something quite similar to it. I was ferrying a Piper Tomahawk, which is a two-seater trainer over Wyoming many, many years ago. And I was flying about 10,500 feet and I was literally following a highway. The, my headwind component was so much that I ended up basically getting passed by the trucks and by the cars down at the highway below. I wasn't flying backwards, my, but my ground speed was so low because of the fact that my airspeed and the headwind, they were at, uh, working against, uh, against each other. So because of that, I just basically parked the airplane and I said, hey, I'm not going to be able to ferry it today with all these headwinds, which was the right decision. So the answer is a passenger airplane cannot fly backwards. Another question that I was asked was what my sign is. Well, my horoscope sign, basically. Uh, my horoscope sign is Scorpio. Another question comes from Eric Chara Kartal. Uh, very simple question. Bose or David Clark? Well, since none of them are sponsoring me, I can speak my mind freely, I guess. I currently use a Bose headset, but it's not the aviation version of it. It is a, a Bose headset that it's designed for passengers. However, there is an additional uh, um, piece that I attach to it. It is TSO approved. Those of you that are flying in the Uni United States, you will understand what I'm talking about. But uh, it is an addition to the Bose headset. Why did not buy a Bose headset? Uh, well, because it's very expensive. Why did I go with this route? Because of the fact that it's a lot cheaper. It's almost half the price. I use an addition thing called N Fly Mic, and there's another company called U Fly Mic that does something similar to it. Basically converts a Bose headset, a passenger headset to an aviation headset. So David Clark is a good company. They came out with new products and so forth. But um, again, you know, I need, I need something that cancels the noise uh, with active noise canceling. So because of that, I decided not to go with uh, David Clark. So I ended up doing the cheap route because pilots are cheap most of the time. Another question comes about my YouTube channel. How did I decide to get on YouTube? Well, turns out that I actually posted my very first YouTube video, believe it or not, in 2011. I found it the other day when I was going through my old emails. I'll post a link to it. No, I won't because then everybody will go there and nobody will come to Kaptan Baha. But one of these days, I'll just basically post a uh, download the video and make a video about my very first uh, YouTube video. But I decided on I decided on coming on YouTube about a year ago because there was a lot of misinformation about flying. There was a lot of misinformation about uh, the pilot jobs and so forth. So I just wanted to put a different, give different angle to, to all these subjects. Hopefully I'm doing a good job about it. I guess I am because in one year I gained almost 11,000 subscribers and the numbers are increasing. Thank you for that. And also please don't forget to subscribe at the channel and share, you the, share these videos with other people so that they can actually get more informed about it. So that's how I decided to become a YouTuber. Well, I don't call myself a YouTuber, but a pilot who makes YouTube videos is, is a better term, I think. Well, I got a lot of questions about my favorite air, aircraft, my favorite airplane. It's kind of like asking to a dad, who's your favorite child? And sometimes it might be an easier to answer that than easier than answering the question of what's your favorite airplane. 
Well, I don't have one, uh, or should I say a very political way, um, the one that I'm currently flying is my favorite airplane. Yes, it is. I actually really like flying the 747. It's an awesome airplane. If you consider the fact that the first aircraft flew 50 years ago, and it went through upgrades, of course, but at the same time, the whole aerodynamics and the dynamics of that airplane, it goes all the way back to the times that we did not even have PCs, and Boeing did a fantastic job designing that airplane. So I think it's safe to say that, you know, 747 is my favorite aircraft. Do I have a, an airplane that I really don't enjoy flying? I haven't met one. And to be honest with you, I actually flown a lot of airplanes, uh, mostly GA aircraft, general air, a, aviation aircraft. But, you know, I don't have a least favorite aircraft, uh, but I do have a most favorite one that I'm flying right now, is, which is the Queen of the Skies. Another question that was asked was uh, something related to the, your favorite airplane is the fact that which airplane I still haven't flown and I want to fly. Because it's a fact that it's an, uh, it's an icon of aviation, I want to fly a DC-3. And if, uh, if I can get the uh, uh, budget for it, I may even actually go all the way to the type rating on a DC-3 because it requires a type rating. But Having that thing on your certificate, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a little bit of a luxury, but at the same time, I would be very happy at least to fly one. Those of you that, are, that they have access to an airplane, uh, to a DC-3, let me know. Maybe we can shoot a DC-3 video together, and uh, that would be fantastic. So yeah, DC-3 is among the airplanes that I want to fly. And then uh, if I get a chance one of these days, I, uh, I want to I wanna fly a fighter, see how that is going to be. So uh, we'll see. Will I be able to handle it? We'll find out. That would be a fantastic video, by the way. All right. So that's my answer to that. Another question I was asked if I was going to uh, buy the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. No, because of the fact that I don't have an Xbox or I don't have a PC that it's going to be able to handle that. If Microsoft wants to send me one for free, it's all fantastic, but I don't think that I'll be able to get one, to be honest with you, from them. Yeah, it's expensive, and I don't have a PC. I have a, like a five-year-old Mac that I might do my videos with and so forth, so um, I don't see it in my budget, so because of that, I, I don't think that I'll be, uh, I'll be getting the Microsoft Flight Simulator their 2020, so, uh, but I have the, <laughs> instead of that, I fly the 747s. How's that? <laughs> One of the interesting questions that I got was, uh, does an airplane take off and uh, land on its own? Uh, doesn't take off on its own yet. Uh, I know that the Airbus has uh, developed some kind of a system in the trial phases of it uh, that they're, they have done a takeoff by, uh, on an uh, Airbus 350, if I'm not mistaken. But an airplanes have been landing on their own for quite some time. Uh, we have something called Autoland. And this is not something that airplane does on its own. It has to be monitored by pilots and so that they can actually intervene whenever they need to. And there are certain requirements for those autolands to be able to flown. There are pilot requirements. There are um, airplane requirements. There are also airfield requirements. I won't get into the details to them of them because of the fact that they're a very long list of the things that they have to satisfy. All right, here's one question about uh, 747 again. Double Aviation, my good old friend uh, from uh, DC area asked me. Uh, you can follow him under Dulles underscore aviation on Instagram. He posts a lot of great pictures over there. And uh, he asks, what's my favorite thing about 747? I think I mentioned that before. I, what I love about 747 is that really good flying machine. It was designed so good that, you know, it's a pilot's airplane. I mean, it's just an airplane that basically still kept the good old feeling of flying, you know, good stick and rudder skills type of stuff. So yes, that's one of my favorite things about 747. I love it. All right, everybody, this is all for now from uh, the people that they wrote me questions in English. So uh, again, on this video, I made one mistake. Find it out, go back and watch it, and let me know what that mistake is down below. And keep your questions coming. I love your comments too, so keep them coming as well. Until next time, Kaptan Baha, out. Another question comes from somebody else that as is the...